Welcome to RCR Insights. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and today's topic is small cells, NFV, and edge computing. And I'm joined today by guests from IBM, Intel, and SpiderCloud Wireless. First, I'd like to introduce Brian Naughton. He is Director of Mobile Strategy at IBM. Brian, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Sorry, network problems. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Brian. We'll, we'll hope to see you in a minute. Thanks. We can hear you. Also here is Caroline Chan. She is Wireless Segment Manager at Intel. Caroline, thank you very much for being here today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, Brian, we can see you now. Perfect. Thank you. And Art King here is here. He is Director of Enterprise Strategy at SpiderCloud Wireless. Art, thanks for being here today. Yeah, Martha. Hi. Thanks for the invitation. So I'd like to start off by learning exactly what is meant by edge computing. And Brian, I'd like you to start us off, if you can, with a little bit of a definition. Okay, so from an IBM point of view, um, mainly driven by the, the growth in, uh, in mobile devices and, you know, smartphones in, in, in recent years, but, you know, very, very soon driven by IoT, there's an explosion of, uh, of data that needs to be uh, analyzed, captured, and in some cases controlled in a very kind of low latency fashion, right? So um, given the amount of this information, processing, you know, processing this data and, and analyzing and controlling right, right at the source of the data is, is pretty important from uh, a whole bunch of use cases that require a lower latency, for example, or uh, just, just high video use cases where there's lots and lots of data that needs to be analyzed. Analyzing at the edge is, is more efficient rather than bringing everything back to, to one central place and, and, and doing so there. So that's a kind of a, a loose definition from an IBM point of view. And Caroline, I know that Intel has done quite a bit of work in this area and um, virtualizing some of the processes as well. Can you give us a little bit of information about that? Yeah, so uh, you, you, some, some of you might have heard that uh, Intel's been behind the movement to uh, network function virtualization. So we see this as the potential to bring the same benefits that we have done in the uh, data center world to the network. So uh, some of throughout with our partners, and we have uh, introduced NFV into the wireless access network it from anywhere from the small cell to the macro cell and cloud. Rate. So by the same token, we apply the uh, virtualization technology, especially some of the real-time virtualization technology that we have done in the uh, the access side onto the edge services. Uh, we believe that by using the that technique, the virtualization technique, will enable some of the things that Brian just talked about, bring the the real the real time, the location, the proximity services in much closer to the user, much closer to where the data is actually being uh, attained. So, how how does that change the network from a hardware perspective? What are some of the the different network elements that uh, are part of the solution, Caroline? Yeah. So. Uh, from our perspective, uh, the, the partners that we've been working with actually starts anywhere from a enterprise uh, small cell controller, like from uh, Arts World, the Spider Cloud Wireless. Uh, we also have customers taking that into the Pico cell, which generally what they do is they take a, a general purpose uh, compute module from and plus storage from Intel and put that either as adjunct or even as part of the design in, in the small cell, the controllers, and macro cells. And now we're starting to work on that in the cloud red as well. Generally, it's incorporation of the general, uh, the general purpose module, x86 module, into the, right into the, the heart of the, uh, the radio access network. Okay, great. And Art, can you give us a little bit of information about your work in this area with, with your small cell solution? Yes, absolutely. Um, our, our processor is actually built into the network element itself, uh, much, like, much as Caroline described. And you know, we built it in such a way that it has access to uh, you know, signaling, bearer channels, um, and event flows inside the small cell to, you know, provide essentially APIs for value-added services to be built on top of it. You know, our, our engineering team put in a hypervisor and various 
various additions to that such that you know value added features of the hardware can also be reached and um, it's it, it, for us it was a big bet as a company that that services out at the edge would you know really be needed in the future and it's 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 amazing to watch it roll out uh, especially being catalyzed by the uh, IOT push and the need for you know high levels of processing inside you know larger structures that you know our technology typically ser services Brian, do you hear a lot more interest from enterprises in, in the Internet of Things? Is that something that uh, is moving to the enterprise as a priority? We do. I mean, so this, especially with small cells. So uh, within buildings, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of smarter building issues around energy, air conditioning, location, movement through a building, um, and so on, right? That, that you know, that, that each will generate a huge amount of information and, and will be, if, if integrated, give people a better experience, builders lower energy bills and, and that kind of stuff. So having, um, having a small cell infrastructure in the same building that allows us to put um, analytics or applications that can integrate to these different systems is, is quite, a, quite an interesting thing. So for example, like, like Art said, uh, being able to, um, to basically track your location in a building using your cell phone. Um, so, you know, I don't need to take my phone out of my pocket and connect to a Wi-Fi network. I don't need an app, this kind of stuff. Integrated with elevator systems or, um, you know, smarter rooms and, and, and so on gives this really interesting uh, experience in the building, right? So the, the small cell infrastructure, and in particular this compute node, uh, allows us to push applications that would, I suppose, normally be hosted in a cloud or, or in some kind of data center right into the building to to manage the building itself, right? And we've got a whole bunch of use cases from general building management to retail, uh, you know, tracking people through a store and sending offers once, you know, once you get close to something you're interested in and uh, to stadiums, again, you know, finding the smallest queues, using the smallest cell infrastructure to, to figure out how many people are waiting in, in various areas and, and so on. There's, there's, there's quite a lot of, of interesting kind of use cases that we can, uh, we can see a lot of value in, in deploying some applications right at the edge, but also integrating with the cellular network and other, other networks in, in, in the building. Right, and you did mention Wi-Fi. Is, is Wi-Fi integration a, a part of this or not? Yeah, well, it's, so, so for, I mean, for us, I mean, there, there, there's, uh, there's horses for courses, I guess, you know, so Bluetooth, from a location perspective, uh, Bluetooth beacons, Wi-Fi, Cellular is really interesting because, um, again, the, 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 I, can't, I don't have to take my phone out of my pocket. I don't have to do anything. Right? I, don't, I don't need an app, and I have the ability to, to find location. Also, from an operator's point of view, there's a, a concept of um, you know, out, outdoor and indoor location being correlated in some way. So I can find out you know, where you've come from to get to the store, or I can find out whether the store is busy before I leave and, and this kind of stuff. Right? So there's... There's an interesting tie-up between a macro network and, a, and, a, and a, you know, the stuff inside a store that, from an operator's point of view, is an opportunity. But I think, in, in, from a location point of view, it will be a number of technologies you know, working together rather than one single one, if that makes sense. Right. You, you do bring up um, that location-based information. Are you hearing that a lot from, from your customers, Caroline, um, an interest in, in learning more about what the users are doing and, and um, then turning around to make offers based on that information or, or maybe develop some proprietary applications? Huge, uh, uh, definitely. So Intel actually uh, complementary to the wireless division, we also have divisions that are focusing on big data. We have a division that is focusing on IoT uh, group. So we're working closely with both divisions and looking at ways uh, describe kind of what uh, what Brian described. There's a lot of uh, interest from both the operator side and the retail segment. Like what is the location? One thing uh, Brian might not have mentioned in besides tracking people, there's a lot of interest in tracking assets, very yeah. uh, high value assets pharmaceutical equipments and medical equipments or sensitive assets. So all of that actually makes it very interesting, a combination of a Wi-Fi, cellular together. With small cell, it's convenient, meaning that you are 
much much closer to the to the user and to the asset. But there is also an element you need to combine that with a macro because eventually that does leave the enterprise and go somewhere else. So I, I think that we just at the very beginning the potential is uh, is, is is very bright. And uh, we, we actually internally within Intel, we definitely started talking with our different uh, brothers and sisters in uh, other divisions, look at how we can combine our assets together and working with partners like uh, IBM and, and Spider Cloud to bring that into a reality, into a proof of concept and a trial quickly. That's great. And it seems like uh, a lot depends on um, communication between the enterprise and the mobile operator, and Art, I'd like to hear your perspective on that. I'm sure that, that that's one of the things that you spend a lot of time thinking about at Spider Cloud is how to sort of put everybody on the same page and, and help everybody understand the benefits. Yeah, I, I think that the enterprises are actually already there, and, and they're waiting for, for the offers to, you know, come through the pipeline to, you know, to get them the services. You know, we, we, we have, on our advisory board, we have a number of uh, medical professionals that run large institutions that would love to have the trackability and, and almost like skills-based routing to find the appropriate medical professional in a crisis that's not busy and, and route them to service somebody. Find the nearest piece of equipment. If someone is down the street at Starbucks, you know, be able to summon them back very quickly. Um, they, one, one of our clients in, in, a, in a early deployment had pulled fiber and, and Wi-Fi APs down the street to the nearest Starbucks in order to extend their services that way because they couldn't get anything from the cellular infrastructure. So that was almost like you know proof of demand right there. So the 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 foundation that we end up building on the spider cloud and then the and then the IBM side of things um, is only going to be a kind of fertile ground for our actual enterprise customers to do uh, I mean almost unforeseen innovations on top of in the future okay thank you and Brian what's your perspective do you think that that mobile operators um, understand uh, the benefits or do you think that they still uh, are concerned about whether they will see an ROI when, when they take these steps well so the more I think the mobile operators are so, so there's a, a very big coverage and capacity initiative right so you know in buildings that act like Faraday cages I need to get better coverage for my, my subscribers right that's that's a kind of a, a sincere motivation but you know there are value-added services that that you know, every mobile operator I've spoken to is is screaming for new revenue, right? That and and they're all looking at ways to to further monetize through value-added services, if if you like the the small cell infrastructure, and you know sell those managed service offerings directly to retailers or directly to stadiums or or whatever makes sense, rather than 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 just you know paying for infrastructure for for coverage and capacity. So. On the flip side, the enterprises uh, have already started to recognize that um, there's an opportunity to share the cost of the infrastructure with the operator. So there's, there's an interesting, a, a lot of stadiums we're looking at are, are, are or even retailers are, are, are struggling to justify just, you know, connectivity in, in their stadiums or stores as a business case. And there's, a, there's an attractive, let's share the infrastructure with the operator, the cost of that in, infrastructure. And then have a joint, you know, if, if there's applications or value-added services that make a difference to me as, as Tesco or Walmart or whatever it is, then both both companies further, you know, derive benefit from that infrastructure. And that's that's an evolving model that, that, that is maturing out, but it's one we're seeing happen in, in a bunch of different places. So you're, you're seeing actual deployments where those costs are shared? Well, so I've seen, I've seen proposals where operators are willing to completely fund the small cell infrastructure. I've seen um, you know, distributed antenna models, if you like, already in place with, with, with stadiums where they're looking to you know, lease back, buy the equipment themselves and lease it back to an operator with small cells. Um, and they're, they're in active negotiation, put it that way. And um, yeah, and, and, and so there doesn't seem to be one kind of set model that's, that's, that's winning right yet. Okay, great. Well, we are running low on time, and I would like to go back to each of you one last time for any, any final thoughts. 
Caroline, we haven't talked a whole lot about, about virtualization, and I know that that's important to Intel. So um, if you'd like to share any final thoughts on that or anything else with us, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, the, thanks for the uh, I mean, really enjoyed this conversation. So to us, virtualization is really the basis of technology. Uh, you know, while IBM and a solution provider, we provide the, the platforms that makes everything works. And what we were doing is applying, we actually just recently released a reference design for the small cell that puts the uh, Intel low power atom with the uh, all the uh, OBP, which is a, uh, for Wind River that has a real-time virtualization and all the tools will enable the, uh, the developer to quickly take this to the market and with the right virtualization techniques such that you can securely separate out what the value added services away from the 3GPP networking uh, workload, for example, which is one of the concerns of the operator. Whatever you do on the value added side should not interfere with actually making a call and, and a data session uh, running well. So, so that's what, what we are applying to, the, uh, to, to our reference platform. Okay, great. And again, have have you seen some some actual deployments that you think are are really um, exemplary of what you're talking about? We uh, obviously Intel doesn't take this to the market directly, but we do have customers have announced a commercial rollout in in a, a couple of the operators. And we do anticipate that we'll have other uh, rollout also, and we are actively involved in in planning some trials right now as as we speak. In the Great. Well, please please keep us posted on yeah. those developments. Art, what about you? Any final thoughts on the role of small cells here? Well, the the, the role of small cells is 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 not just an anchor point to host a processor, but also to provide the adequate signal and in, in, indoors. The, 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 the thing that we all forget around IoT and scaling is any technology that could have a client-side configuration or requires construction of infrastructure creates very large barriers, and especially for IT organizations who just can't manage it all. So the, the kind of the quiet beauty of the cellular infrastructure is for a small transactional fee. You have a network that kind of exists everywhere, and all you need to do is associate a SIM identity with whatever the subsystem is, and you're you're done from a configuration perspective. So, the the management overhead from from cellular um, is is re it removes a lot of burden from the organization, you know, in exchange for a little revenue to the operator. So, you know, I think that as people get go to think about scaling, you know, cellular is interesting because of that. All right, thank you very much, Art. And Brian, what about you? Any final thoughts before we finish? One of the things that I, I guess I didn't, the virtualization topic is, is, is pretty important from our point of view. So we see this as an extension, literally, of, of, of cloud, right? So it's, it's a, a platform where we can you know, either integrate a bunch of sensors. And, and from, a, from our point of view, cellular is just one sensor of, of many within a building or, or even outdoors, right? Um, but the key thing is that we can integrate that platform with our cloud, but also run applications uh, managed, you know, as as if it was virtually in one one cloud infrastructure, um, out in the network. And so that's a key key feature of all of this, right? All right. Thank you very much, Brian Naughton, Director of Mobile Strategy at IBM. Thank you very much for joining us from the UK today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Caroline Chan, Wireless Segment Manager at Intel. Caroline, thank you for being here today. Thank you. And Art King, Director of Enterprise Strategy at Spider Cloud Wireless. Art, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Martha. Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you.